Hello and welcome to my tutorial on how to set up and operate a Cardano stake pool on Windows platform. Um, this topic is a little bit advanced and it's not entirely intended for developers, but also and mostly for stakeholders and investors who want to be stake pool operators. Okay, um, as a quick introduction, since I want to keep my video tutorials as short as possible. So I might, uh, and since this is a very broad topic, so I might um, um, divide this tutorial into two to three segments in order for us to encompass the entirety of the uh, stake pool concept, okay? And before we proceed, actually, um, there, are, there are a few pointers that I want to share with you, which are very important before you dive right into it. Um, <coughs> In the developer's website of Cardano, there's a stake pool course here, and it is highly recommended that, that you go through each and every lesson here, especially some of the videos here that are very important, such as the one that discusses about um, KES or key evolving signatures and pledge mechanism, okay? And then another thing that you need to, to know before you start is that when to set up a stake pool, you will be needing at least a couple of nodes or machines, and one of which is the block producing node, and the other one is the relay node. So the block producing node, uh, this is where all the things, the important and secure things that are happening. And this is this uh, block producing node can only communicate with your relay node, and your re relay node is the one that communicates with all the rest of the stake pool operators, okay? And then um, uh, all these tutorials are actually intended for Linux and Mac, so there's no Windows tutorial, so I have to come up with my own experimentation with the commands and everything. So, so what I did is I came up with a step-by-step -step guide intended for Windows. Uh, which is a actually a summary of all the instructions here. Because, for example, here, uh, the topics are segregated into smaller topics. And so what I'm doing is um, I'm compiling each and every topic, each and every basic step, and present it to you in a single unified process. So it's easier for you to follow. Okay. And then there's a limitation that I encountered going through all these uh, uh, topics here. Um, there's a handbook here and that gives you some examples on how to generate uh, the needed keys, certificates, and addresses. So the limitation that I'm talking about here is that uh, the payment address and the stake address uh, that was generated by these, by these examples were generated from the verification key uh, that was generated by the command line interface directly. So uh, having the payment address and not having the uh, recovery phrase, we will not be able to import our wallet into a desktop or mobile wallet of choice. So since we cannot back it up, and we, we don't have the recovery phrase by following this example. So what I did was um, through experimentation and further research, I came up with uh, another step-by-step uh, -step guide um, that generates the payment address from a recovery phrase. So that way we can back up our wallet or and import it into a desktop or mobile wallet that we want, all right? So I think we're good to go, and I will share you this step-by-step uh, -step guide so that you can just copy-paste them, and you can also actually change all the file names here, all the folder names, according to your desire, okay? Now, let's proceed. Uh, <coughs> inside the Cardano node folder, I created a pool folder and another one inside the Cardano wallet folder. Now, actually, this is not needed. Uh, I, I just made it because I want to organize all the files that I'm creating. I don't want to clutter all the folders here. So 
let's go and use and open the uh, Cardano wallet uh, folder because we will be needing the uh, Cardano address command line application here in the first uh, few steps. Okay, let's go to our Cardano wallet folder and then let's proceed with our step-by-step -step guide. The first step is actually to simply generate a recovery phrase because that is what we will need to back it up. And then we are instructing the Cardano address command line application to uh, generate a recovery phrase and save it into a file inside the full folder. Okay, so let's press enter and then that's done. We now have a recovery phrase saved here. Okay. The next step is now to generate an extended private key out of the recovery phrase that we just generated. Okay, that's two. That's, that's done. So it's saved inside the extended private key file. Okay. Now the next step is to get the public counterpart of that private key. save it inside the xfab.key file okay so uh, that's done and then we proceed with the next step which is to derive a child payment key from the parent private key that we just generated and saved inside the key file and output the result inside the payment.key file okay Okay, that's done. And then we proceed with the next step. The fifth step is to derive, this time, a child stake key from the parent private key and save it inside the stake.key file. Here it is. Okay, so we are basically done with the um, Cardano wallet command line application. Now we are going to pr proceed with the next step using Cardano CLI. But if we go to the Cardano wallet uh, folder, there's an existing CLI here, which is not we are going to use because this is outdated and the later version is actually found inside the Cardano node folder. So this is the one we will be using. So the reason for this folder is actually simply <laughs> to copy all the files that we generated here and put it here since we will be now using the Cardano CLI. So let's go to the top folder and then we proceed with the next step, which is we are now converting the extended signing keys into a corresponding shell format keys. So let's convert the extended payment key first and I'll put it into payment.s key. And then we convert now this time the sign the stake key and output into the stake S key file. So the payment S key is here and the stake S key is here. All right. So the next step is to get an extended verification key from the payment signing key and the stake signing key. So this is where. Uh, we are jumping now into the instructions that uh, presented here on the Cardano developers website. Okay, so this is actually a shortcut version and we just went through a different route uh, because we needed our um, recovery phrase. So let's proceed to the next step. We generate a verification key from the payment key. So the V key is now here. And now we go to the, uh, we now get the extended verification key from the stake signing key. So then save it to X stake V key file. So here it is. Here are the two files that we just generated. 
The next step now is to get a non-extended verification key from the extended payment and stake verification keys. So we're ju simply just getting the non-extended version one. Okay, and save it to payment V key. And the other one, save it to the stake V key file. All right, so we have both the um, stake V key and the payment key files. Let's proceed to the next step. Now this time we are going to build an actual payment address using both the non-extended payment and stake verification keys. All right. The output will be saved in the payment address file. So let's check, here it is. And if we open that with notepad, there we go. We have the uh, payment address and the backup recovery place. All right, so the next step is now to generate a stake address and a registration certificate. Before you can register a stake address into the blockchain, you need a registration certificate. And that means we are going to access the blockchain, create a transaction, and pay a certain fee. So before we go into that, let's uh, generate a stake address first. And save it into a stake that address file. Here it is. And then now we generate a stake certificate so we can register it on the blockchain. And it's saved inside the stake certificate. So we will discuss that later in the next tutorial. For now, we'll just generate everything that we need. All right, so this is a more advanced uh, key generation procedure now. So we're going to, before we uh, proceed, uh, it is highly recommended that when you generate cold keys and cold counter, it is recommended that you don't store this in any machine that has internet connection. So it's better to save this somewhere that is disconnected, maybe in a separate hard drive, but never on your nodes or your production machines, okay? So let's proceed, let's generate a cold key and the cold counter which will be needed when we register our state pool to the blockchain. So now we have both the cold key and the cold counter. The next step is the um, VRF keys. Okay, so we will discuss that later on, what are those keys for, uh, but they are found actually on the Cardano developer's website. Okay, now that's generated. Now the next step is to produce the KES key pair. So let's check, we have the VRF keys and the KES keys. All right, so we get in there. And the next step is now to generate a nodes operational certificate. So let's do that and we will output the result into node.cert file. Okay, and here it is, now we have couple of certificates here because we will de we will be doing a couple of registrations one is to register our stake address into the blockchain and then the next one will be to register the actual stake pool all right um, those topics will be discussed in our next tutorial okay now um, just to prepare the funds that we will be needing, the other tokens that we will be needing to register our uh, stake address and our node, uh, we will need to deposit a certain amount of blood base. Um, one blood base is equal to one millionth of a one added token. So 
if you go to the uh, main uh, Shelly Genesis JSON file inside the Cardano configuration file, I mean configuration folders, Cardano, then go to open the main Shelly Genesis file. Okay, under the protocol param parameters, there's a uh, key deposit here, so it instructs us to deposit um, two million love bases or equivalent to two added tokens, plus, of course, the corresponding blockchain fees. So to be safe, we will be depositing around three added tokens into our payment address, all right? Now, once you've deposited it, once you've sent the uh, tokens, um, you can actually query how much balance our wallet has by using this command. Okay, so let's do that. Let's check the balance of our payment address using this command. So it has queried the uh, blockchain and found no transactions yet. So in our next tutorial, I'm going to first deposit uh, some uh, ADA tokens, and then we will check again the balance of our payment address. All right. So this wrap up. This wraps up our um, initial segment of our tutorial, and the next tutorial, which is a continuation of this one, we will now transact or um, submit our certificates and register our stake address in our stake pool into the blockchain. Okay, stay tuned and thank you for watching.